Now let's end our series of videos on regular languages and discuss what we know about regular languages and try to summarize. I'll start at the bottom of this slide. Uh, we've talked about deterministic finite state machines and non-deterministic finite state machines and we've shown that they are equivalent in their power. They recognize the same class of languages. So from here on out we can just refer to finite state machines and not worry about the distinction uh, between deterministic and non-deterministic. They all have the same level of power in terms of the class of languages that they can recognize. And so that is how we define regular languages. Then we defined regular expressions and we showed that um, regular expressions describe exactly the regular languages. Every regular language can be described by a regular expression. So what we have is this whole regular world down here. And it doesn't matter whether you specify the language with a finite state machine or a regular expression and whether that finite state machine is deterministic or non-deterministic. You can do it any way you want. They describe the same set of languages, the same class of languages. We also talked about regular expressions and we used a concatenation and union with a vertical bar as well as the star operator. And regular expressions are very powerful and um, well they're, I shouldn't say they're very powerful but they're widely used and very convenient for describing lots of things. Um, the, in, as an example of the usefulness of regular expressions and regular languages, uh, in compilers it's oftentimes the case that the tokens are described by regular expressions. So for example, a programming language like C or Java or Python or whatever can, might have identifiers in it. And those identifiers might be defined, for example, to be one or more letters and digits with the starting character being a letter. So that's described by this regular expression, a letter followed by zero or more letters or digits. And that's a simple definition for what it means to be an identifier. Now the language itself, the full language, is more likely going to be described by a context-free grammar and we'll talk about that in the next series of videos. But the tokens, that is the fundamental parts of the language, such as the identifiers and also the numbers, um, can be described and very precisely and unambiguously as regular languages. So here for example is a regular expression describing a very small language, namely the language of identifiers. And this language is used as a small part of a much larger definition uh, involving context-free grammar rules and so on. There are a number of different questions we might ask about regular languages and finite state machines. And basically these questions can all be answered. These are what we'll call decidable questions. We'll talk a lot more later about what this word decidable exactly means and we'll give a very formal and precise definition of it. But basically, to summarize, if a question is decidable it means we can write a program to answer the question and that program will always terminate. If a question is decidable it means we can write a program that will take as input uh, an example of the question, an instance of the problem, and that program will uh, give you the answer and it will never loop, it will always terminate. So decidable questions are good, things that are not decidable uh, we can't really write programs for them, um, but it turns out that just about everything we can ask about regular languages and finite state machines is decidable. Um, for example, um, if we have a finite state machine, what is the minimal finite state machine that's equivalent to it? Okay, we can, we can find the answer to that. We can compute that. Uh, what about uh, whether we're given two finite state machines? Do they accept the same language? Well, uh, yeah, we can answer that question. Um, for example, we could come up with their finite state machines and minimize the finite state machines and, and simply compare the two uh, graphs or compare the two mach machines. Is the language empty? Um, does it have any strings? 
Or is it an infinite language? Are there arbitrarily long strings in it? We can answer these questions. Are two regular expressions equivalent? That's another thing we can answer. Um, I should also add that not only can we um, uh, answer the questions about the languages, um, when it comes to parsing them and determining whether a string is in a regular language or not, we can do this very efficiently. Um, there are simple algorithms to take a finite state machine or a regular expression and turn it into code. So we can actually produce the code to, to parse the language uh, automatically and strings can be recognized and either accepted or rejected uh, very efficiently. Uh, so uh, here I say uh, almost every problem about regular language is decidable. Uh, frankly, I, I can't think of anything that's not decidable, so I'm going to cross that out and say every problem or every question about regular languages is decidable. Now, I'll just add as a caveat, some of these questions may be NP-complete, and in a later video we'll talk about what that means, but basically it means that uh, the amount of time required to uh, answer the question may be exponential in the number of states in the finite state machine, um, but uh, nonetheless it is decidable, it, we can do it. Some of the questions may take a little time to answer, and that's all I'm saying here, but they can be answered, so they are decidable questions. The world of regular languages, finite state machines, and regular expressions is basically a fixed small world that's fully explored. and. Uh, it's useful, it's practical, and you need to know about it uh, in order to uh, proceed in computer science. But in terms of uh, difficult questions, well, everything's decidable, and it's just really a question of doing it super efficiently and conveniently. Uh, and so that's engineering, and that's uh, beyond the scope of this class, since it's a theory class. So in the next uh, round of videos, we'll move into the world of context-free languages, where the questions get much more interesting.